Hello again everybody and uh, welcome to our next uh, lesson on uh, the brutal simple introduction to Revit um, using Revit LT. So um, in the last lesson um, what it was about was modifying these things here, these wonderful little things. So the two default levels that we get with every project. So um, as you may recall our ground floor didn't change but we changed the ceiling level from 4000 to 2700 millimeters and we renamed it. It was originally level 01 that's now called ceiling level and when we look to our project browser on the left hand side we can see that the name was changed um, as well so our plans match what's happening on in the um, our project view. Okay, so this lesson um, is just about building some walls. Now that we have a bottom, a, a, an appropriate bottom constraint and a top constraint for our walls. So, where do we go to start our walls? We go to the floor plan where the walls will be, where the base of the walls will go. So let's go to our ground floor plan. So to our project browser, double click on ground floor. Okay, and here we are. So this is where we're going to. So basically, this is the ground floor, and this is where we're going to draw. So the walls will draw from the ground floor in an upwards direction. Okay. Now, where is the command for drawing the walls? Two ways of getting to the to the wall command. Number one is we go up to the very we go into our have a look at our ribbon. We go to our architecture tab, and we've got wall there. And there's a little drop down arrow there. You can click on that just quickly, and um, it gives us a range of options. We've got a, an architectural wall, a structural, or an in-place wall. Okay, because this is an introduction, we're just going to do the wall um, architectural, and that's what our default will be. And you'll see in the curse, um, when I hover over there, um, little um, help buttons popped up for us, and in brackets next to wall architectural, it says WA, and that's the short key command. Um, so that's really all we need to use. So I'm just going to click on click on there I'll do it the long way so there's click on the down arrow click on wall architectural normally I could just um, check on you know type in WA and off we go so what happens when we type in a command in Revit okay the screen changed a little bit okay so the first thing that changed was we got this little beastie here okay and this is called the options bar okay so this is basically provides us with a little bit of information um, a few properties that we can change um, it's all like the essential shortcuts the same information is available to us in the properties window um, so it doesn't really matter where we go to get this information it just um, it just gives us a couple of options okay it might be easier for us to look at the properties at this stage. It's a little bit more information um, and it's just a little bit easier to see with regards to a YouTube screen. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is choose a type of wall. Okay, you have to forgive my printer um, ticking away in the background there. Don't know why it does that. Okay, so back to here. We want to choose the type of wall. So this is the name of the wall that's been chosen by default, Double Brick 270. We don't really want to deal with that, it's a bit clunky, a bit ugly. So just click on this space here, where the little drop down arrow is. Okay, and down here we get a list of walls provided to us out of the box. Okay, so these are just the default walls. Now it depends on where you are in the world, what system, what libraries, you load up, um, etc. as to what wall types you will receive in your template. Now I'm in Australia, I've downloaded the Australian template, so what we get is an, a range of walls that are well suited or reasonably well suited 
to the Australian um, construction systems. Okay, they're not perfect, but it certainly gives us something to start off with. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to look down here and above the double brick 270, we've got a wall here which is the brick veneer 250 timber. Okay, so I'm going to left click on that. Now, if you're a, if you're a designer or an architect in Australia, you'll know that 250 is not technically correct. Okay, it is normally a 240 brick veneer wall, but um, we're just going to use the 250 to start off with. Okay, so we've chosen a, um, a type of wall. We're going to go down here into the properties and just look at a couple of other options here. Okay, so the location line is reasonably important and that's the the position that the wall is drawn from. So if we choose wall centre line, the wall is going to be drawn 50-50 either side of the wall, um, of the centre line. Okay, so we'll just stick to it def the, that default. Okay, but there are a range of other options there. We're going to look at those progressively. Okay, our base constraint. Okay, so this is where the wall starts. Okay, we definitely want that to be on the ground floor. There's a little bit of information here. There's a base offset. Let's ignore that for now. Just keep it at zero. Okay, and here's the important one, the top constraint. And by default, when we start any new project, the top constraint starts off as unconnected and um, the default height of the wall when it's unconnected is 8,000 millimeters okay which is pretty high for a residential wall okay so we don't want to be unconnected we want to constrain the top of our wall one tower rivet where to build this wall exactly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on where it says unconnected we get a little drop down arrow and it gives us the available levels which we can constrain our walls to. Okay, so we're already at the ground floor. We obviously can't go from ground floor to ground floor, but we can go up to level, ceiling level. Okay, now look what happens here. So the unconnected height's now greyed out, but it does tell us what the height of the wall will be. And if you remember, if you go to our elevations very, very quickly, to 700 on the right hand side of my screen there. Okay, back to my floor plan. Back to the wall command. There it is there, that 2700. So that helps us define what's going on. Um, the key thing is, is that, and this is something that I was taught when I started using Revit, okay, is apply as many top constraints as you can. Okay, don't use unconnected, it just creates heartache um, later on. So really that is all we need to know for the walls at the moment. Okay, there's not a huge amount of information available to us now. Right, finally I'll try and tell my computer never to send that message to me again. Okay, now wall command active. Wall centre line, ground floor, bottom, ceiling level, top. Now all we need to do is draw. Okay, so um, double check in our drawing space. Okay, so we're going to draw this at 1 to 100. Okay, and that's all we need to know right now. Now the key thing here is that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 elevation markers. We want to draw within this square. Okay, otherwise Revit's not good. these elevations aren't going to be able to see the building very easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, and this is a, just a normal, or at least I would normally deliver to my students in a real class. Okay, is we'll just draw a, an L-shaped house. Okay, so I'm going to start in the left hand, top left hand corner here, about there. Okay, roughly 10, 10 meters, six down, eight, eight and up. Okay, now there's a very very quick process. Left click all the way, okay, and if I zoom in you'll see that the walls, everything's joined in nicely, it's all filleted and clean and all that sort of stuff. This is where we get a massive time saving with regards to um, uh, traditional 2D CAD like AutoCAD and micro, uh, MicroStation. Okay, we don't need to fill it and trim walls. We just click them down. It's quite simple.
Okay. Now, this is the first command. So what I did is I went, you know, I went click, 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 click. I drew my wall. And then to finish that segment of the command, I hit the escape key once. Okay. And what that does is that keeps me in the wall command, but then I can actually go ahead and draw another wall if I want. If I want to get out of command completely in Revit, I have to hit the, the escape key twice. Okay. If you only hit it once, you're always going to be stuck in the command. So, I don't know about too many other Revit users, but I know with me, my hand lives on the escape button because I'm basically constantly activating and killing commands. Um, so, it's a, it's a handy um, thing to do. Right. So what we can do now is I'm going to repeat this wall command. Okay, so I'm going to go, this time I'm going to go WA. That's my wall command. I'm going to go back to my properties. I'm going to choose a different wall this time. Okay, um, in Australia, um, New Zealand, okay, we use um, timber framing an awful lot. So stud timber wall, okay, 90 millimeters thick. Um, it's the old 2x4 basically, or 4x2. Okay, just do a double check, it should be okay though. Base constraint, constraint ground floor, top constraint, ceiling level. Okay, and I can just click on here, zoom in. So each time I'm drawing a wall, so I go and left click, left click, there we go. I can stop halfway. And you'll see that Revit's constantly giving us information about what we are drawing. So it's telling us the angle, if I swing that around, okay, it'll tell me that I've got a 45 degree angle there. So we can do, there's a range of really cool settings there. Okay, I'll take one more there. Okay, so I'm a prolific tapper of the escape key to always make sure that everything's out. So that's the bone. That is the bones of the wall tool. It's actually, you know, really simple, and it is so fast. Okay, now at the moment, all we see in this wall tool is a grayed-out block. Okay, so it's a, like a solid fill type of region. Okay, if I go down to my left, the left hand here, we've got my view controls here. So there's my scale to the left. The one next to it is called the detail level. Okay, and at the moment we're in coarse detail level, so we don't basically we just see outlines. Okay, if I click on that, left click, okay, and if I change that to say the fine detail level, ta da, there we go, zoom in a little bit, okay, there is our brick veneer wall in a lot more detail, okay, so two key things we see here. Number one, we see the detail of the wall, so we have in there we've got the timber veneer, we've got the um, timber frame, which is the low bearing component. We've got our air gap in here, and we've got the brick external um, element. The other key, th key thing we see here is that we've got some line thicknesses already. So Revit by default has you know some line thicknesses and line weights applied to everything, so it's really really handy. So the defaults can be a little bit chunky, but at least it's something to get us cracking with. Okay. The other thing to quickly look at these walls as well, okay, is that I drew this external wall in a clockwise direction, okay, and that forced the brick to go on the outside or the external face to go on the outside. If I had drawn, or if you practice and if you had drawn in an anti-clockwise direction, you'll see that the brick would, would have been on the inside. Easy way to fix that, click on the wall, okay, and you'll see these little up and down arrows here and they change the walls orientation if you click on those click it once that just flips the wall upside you know flips it on its axis okay do that again there's another way of doing that and there's a space key space key space key nice and quick so it doesn't really matter too much as you know whether you've got the walls around the wrong way at this at this stage okay now have a very quick look at our handiwork let's go to the top of the screen Okay, there's a short key here, it's a little wee house, it's the default 3D view, so left click on that. Okay, hold your shift key down, okay, and 
hold your middle mouse button down at the same time you can move your mouse around and you'll get your little scroll okay so you can orbit around and have a look at the building okay so the reality is you compare this to AutoCAD AutoCAD this would have been you know a good a uh, good half hour of work if not more um, Revit it, it was basically a matter of seconds okay and if I double check on my east elevation there's my walls well, north elevation walls 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 so th this is the fundamental beauty of this type of software we draw the walls in one view and all of a sudden we have got valuable information in just about every way possible to view the project okay so it leaves us a lot more time to actually do some detailing okay but for the time being we're going to put a pause on this uh, little thing I'm going to upload and publish on YouTube and hopefully we'll see you for the next one